Всем добрый вечер. Меня зовут Инес, и в первую очередь я хочу вам сказать, что для меня это очень особый случай, что я приехала в Москву. В Москве я никогда раньше не была в своей жизни. И сегодня я буду рассказывать о том, что я действительно люблю делать. Спасибо вам за это приглашение. Когда я думала о материале для этой лекции, я задалась вопросом, как я могу рассказать о своей работе, интересно для вас. Я подумала о том, что, может быть, я могу разделить всю свою работу на две большие категории. Это очень простая формула, но, как мне кажется, в этом нет ничего плохого. Первая часть моей практики может быть озаглавлена «Независимое исследование», а вторая часть — «Совместная работа», «Работа в сотрудничестве». Что касается вот этой второй части, я имею в виду те заказы, которые я делаю как графический дизайнер, когда я работаю с другими людьми и для других людей. В каком-то смысле... Эта работа, связанная с решением проблем. Если говорить про первую категорию, это скорее создание проблем. Вот эти две темы, как вы видите, они существуют в параллели в моей работе, примерно вот так. И если бы я хотела изобразить это абстрактно, я бы использовал нули и единицы. Иногда происходит вот такое. Моя работа становится чуть более интересной, когда эти две разные формы практики начинают сливаться. В идеальной рабочей ситуации это становится похоже на бинарную систему исчисления. Недавно произошло нечто новое в моей практике. Я создала книгу, посвященную моей работе. Для меня это тоже очень особенная, особенная работа. И я думала о том, что сегодня будет уместно как раз рассказать о моей работе, в которой я резюмировала свое независимое исследование. Я бы сегодня хотела в первую очередь рассказать об этих независимых работах в сочетании с работами, которые я делала на заказ. И я буду рассказывать о том, как они пересекаются. Вот как выглядит моя книга. Она называется «Save. Сохранить». Итак, о каком же исследовании я рассказываю? Что я исследую в своей практике? Последние несколько лет мне было интересно следующее. Мне интересно, что происходит. It would create beautiful blue lines and uh, anchor points. Um, and then I realized, okay, it's nice, but it's very temporary. It's an action I do on my computer, and then the screen shows me something. Um, but I cannot really keep it. Um, it's very temporary. So how can I save it? Um, this is again the same uh, woman, um, but then imported in Photoshop, and then with the magic wand tool, I selected her. Um, I made this screenshot to keep it, and then the next step was that I, I printed the screenshot, and I kind of like that because now the, the really flat digital image had a structure uh, because of the bad printing quality. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then I started um, scanning the print again and then printing it again. And then I uh, made a drawing of it. And the reason why I wanted to make a drawing of it is because 
I don't understand anything about computers and I don't know why it looks like that. Um, but I was curious and I wanted to get to know it. So then the decision came to imitate the screen and actually try to get to know um, the specific shapes it was showing to me. So this screenshot, which was originally just a selection, um, became something material. Um, and then um, this appears also in the book, uh, like this. So she's one of the characters uh, playing in my book. That's how I like to see it. It's long, one long associative story of different elements um, yeah, that I um, try to make real or try to make exist. And they appear, they reappear, they play a certain role and sometimes they would come back after a few pages and then look totally different um, or have a different printing technique. Or they would be combined with other elements. Um, so in the book, there's not only drawings, but also uh, photographs I took um, from everyday life. Uh, there are also pieces of text in it. Um, so here are a few other quick examples of these um, capturings I made from the screen. Uh, this, for example, was a poster design um, with all line drawings. And um, I was not 100% satisfied with the poster, but once I selected everything, all of a sudden it became something more interesting to me because of the blue selection lines and the anchor points that it was showing. And this one would come literally like how I screenshotted it in the book. But then this one is a screenshot of uh, a finder window. Um, when you browse through your files, it would show a preview and the name of the file. And here there's a reproduction in the book uh, with only the file name um, that I copied in pencil. Um, or this screenshot was from um, a sketch I made for a magazine. And um, uh, when you press a different preview mode, certain shapes would create this cross um, in the middle. And that's a, um, a visualization I try to copy and reinterpret into book, in the book as well. When you press W, um, the shapes become open. So what I said before about these different graphic elements uh, starting to be personalities and starting to be um, an actor in a, in a play that I maybe direct. Um, well, here you can see, for example, a stamp tool, um, like when in Photoshop you stamp something. Um, I was fascinated by the fact that this circle that would appear on the screen would be um, pixelated. And then I would combine it with um, a quote that I took from Facebook. And so, and next to that also a comment from uh, Photoshop. So this dot would first be empty, then it would be full. Um, we would zoom in on it and get to know it better. It would jump around in the uh, baseline grid and adjust and be responsive to the columns and then it becomes uh, more of a material once, I've been, uh, once it was been drawn. In the back of the book, uh, there is a very long uh, index and um, it's uh, where you see all the numbers. So every element in the book has a number, as you can see uh, on the bottom of the page. So these uh, elements would uh, get a name in the end of the book. And sometimes it's really um, explaining where it comes from. So for example, um, like, doesn't, uh, yeah, the stamp would have uh, the caption, uh, stamps feelings, um, stamp uh, jumping over the, over the page. Um, Yeah. 
but then back to the beginning of the book, um, it kind of starts with a, um, a setting of an atmosphere I wanted to create. And it says this sentence, choose a feeling. And it's a quote that I took from um, uh, Facebook. Um, when you do a status update, Facebook asks you, um, how do you feel? And then you, when you put your cursor into the frame, you get a suggestion uh, or a lot of suggestions of feelings. Um, and then I put it in alphabetical order as a sort of uh, menu uh, to start the book with. So it's not only elements coming from design interfaces, but also from social media um, and other uh, user templates uh, on our computers. Um, not only the suggested feelings, but also uh, the noisy part of, um, of Facebook, like where are you or who are you with? Um, but also one um, specific word combination I really liked, it's suggested friends. When you take it out of context, it can be, um, yeah, it can be very um, inspiring for me. And um, for this lecture, I, I didn't only want to talk about um, commissioned work as a graphic designer, but also things you do on your own. Um, and this is something I do on my own, and it's a little uh, silly platform. It's called Suggested Friends. And, um, and for me, it's just an umbrella where I try to do silly stuff or things I just want to do, and I have no specific reason but I feel I need to try it. So this, for example, used for my name card. And then at one point I made a blanket, uh, which could be like a suggested friend when you're cold. <laughs> um, and the blanket so is I made of a, also a screenshot. Uh, this was an image where some parts of it were stamped and copied, and then certain colors were deleted, so this background would appear. And I thought the pattern would uh, work nicely on a fabric when it would be uh, woven, because then you have like positive and negative on the back. Or another silly thing I did, um, is a glass of wine I designed. Um, so this could be like a comforting friend when you, I don't know, um, you're having troubles and you need a listening ear. Um, and next to uh, suggested friends, uh, there's another umbrella um, that I have and that I do together with uh, Elias Drbove. Um, he was a colleague of mine, uh, we uh, shared the studio. Now he's uh, the love of my life. <laughs> um, and we thought general purpose, uh, well, first of all, we saw it on a store. It's a store that we pass often in Antwerp. And um, we thought it was really funny because the title of the store is um, General Sport. But then the subtitle is uh, Tennis Specialzaak. And it's Dutch for um, a specialty in tennis. So we really like this contradiction of uh, claiming you're very general and then um, you're also being very specific about something. Um, and then we bought sunglasses for my cousin and then, or my niece. Um, and then we saw this sticker on, on it and it had the same uh, general um, ID behind it. Uh, so this sticker had also these hollow words like total protection, uh, general purpose, um, tested, category number one. Um, we were wondering what does it all mean? It doesn't have any purpose at all. Then we copied the logo um, and tried to make uh, our own thing with it. Um, and this we put on an umbrella. And again, it was just something silly that we thought, oh, let's just make an umbrella um, and let's see how it goes. Now we have like uh, <laughs> 100 umbrellas at our place that we don't get rid of, but 
we just tried, and now we know um, how it goes. Um, at one point, we also had a studio, or a new studio, and uh, we thought we want to invite people, and we want to, again, organize something. Um, and then we thought of general um, ways of how people uh, organize uh, something in a space. So that could be an exhibition with a beginning, a vernissage, and an ending, a finissage. But normally you have a few weeks or a few months in between it. But we did it just at the same time. Um, so this is the flyer, front and back. Um, yeah, so it's two events uh, taking place um, in one time and in one space. So we divided the room in two, and on um, the left side you had the vernissage, on the right side you had the finissage, and then lots of wine, and uh, a border in the middle where people could cross and um, uh, change the moment in time. We also found a lot of uh, really nice logos that already exist. Um, it's a very popular uh, formulation, general. So you have general formulations, general tire, general music, um, general accident, trust general, gruppo generali in Italian. And then we printed all the logos, and um, this was actually the only thing that was shown during the show, our sponsors. Um, and then, but before we had that studio, we had another studio, and it was the building where it was located was called uh, Friendship Building. And uh, it's already a funny name, but we decided to swap it, the two words, so it became more a verb, so it became building friendship. And then we wanted to organize a little um, fair uh, where we would invite uh, friends of ours, so um, other designers, other artists, um, to sell stuff. Um, and um, it was a little market, and. In the end, it was uh, quite a success. So the year after, we decided to do it again. Um, and then I was wondering, um, yeah, is this now the logo? Um, and then, no, we don't need a logo. Um, but then I got caught into a process of still designing a lot of different logos, uh, which was for me just um, an excuse to uh, make stuff and to try out things and uh, see what works and what doesn't. But then I had all these logos and then um, we decided to just make an empty poster for the event and put all the different logos on the bottom. Again, as if um, it was sponsored by all these different BFFs. Um, and then we printed way too many posters, um, and then uh, we just cut it, and then we also had flyers. But the funny thing is, again, this was something very quick and very um, in between friends. Um, and then, but for me, that's really important to um, try those things. But then it was nice that um, the advertisements were shown on these huge screens um, on a festival um, that was happening one week before where I worked for as a, their graphic designer. But um, I'm gonna try to jump back to the book or to uh, Facebook. Um, so it's not only the language or the vocabulary of uh, these online um, platforms that I was fascinated by, um, also the way how it looks or how uh, these websites um, and apps are designed. So we constantly look at the, the screen and it's designed. Um, it's a template uh, that shows us content and it really influences also how we see the content. 
Um, so this is an abstraction of a Facebook uh, profile. Um, this is how it would appear in the book. And these are some sketches um, of um, yeah, the research I've been doing, uh, or yeah, tryouts, I would call it, uh, where I try to um, decompose the structure and see if it's still recognizable. Um, and again, these steps would uh, appear in the book uh, somewhere in the story. So all this happens more um, in an um, independent um, environment, or that's what I do alone at home. Um, but then sometimes uh, I get a job where I think, ah, maybe I can use uh, what I just um, have been investigating. Um, so this was a job and uh, for a paper factory, uh, a Belgian paper factory, and they were uh, coming up with a new paper range which was called Modigliani. And they had different kinds of papers um, they wanted to present. And um, I had to make printed matter that could uh, show the paper. Um, and the woman from the company was constantly talking to me about the profile of the paper, the character of the paper, almost as if it were human. Um, so that's why I decided to make actual profiles or Facebook profiles for each of the paper. Um, and then they would appear on um, different sizes of posters. And then inside the template, um, I used some linguistic games um, or meanings uh, of the name of the paper. And then you could all fold them back into a folder. Um, but not only Facebook, but also Instagram, uh, I feel is something very, uh, well, that influences the way we see images nowadays. Um, like uh, 10 years ago, a picture for me was still rectangular, um, and now it becomes more and more square. Um, also words like feed, um, when you, um, think about the original meaning of it, um, it became now something totally uh, different. Um, at one point, uh, a magazine called me and asked me to do um, an image editorial, and then they said, you can do whatever you want. Um, these are the hard design jobs, um, because everything is possible. But then I thought, Okay, it's gonna be printed, so it's, uh, I think it was eight pages. So I tried to see those eight pages as a Instagram feed, so where I could post um, some uh, darlings on. I call them darlings, it's like just design sketches that I had to delete or didn't use in the end. Um, so then I would use also this um, um, phenomena where people want to make a big image on Instagram and then they post like several small posts. Um, but when it goes wrong and um, yeah, I kind of saw the beauty in that. Or for example, the word story, it's also a vocabulary that, yeah, if you would ask me 10 years ago uh, the definition of a story, it would be something else, or it would be less nuanced than my answer now. Uh, now it also means something new. Um, and then I was also fascinated by this new sort of page numbering. So um, it's not anymore with numbers, but your pages of your story uh, are numbered with uh, stripes or with bars on top. Um, and when I was asked to do um, a visual essay about Fashion Week um, by Collateral Journal, um, I took images from um, the eight most important trends of the spring 2019 season, and I blurred them as if it was yeah, like a slow, in slow internet connection. And uh, it was a series of eight images, and then um, when you could, when you could consult the bars on the top to see um, 
which number of image in the series it was. Again, the word window um, means many different things now. Um, in the book, it would appear um, like this, when you open a new window, and then you open a second one, and uh, you open four windows. Or at least when you do that on your phone, um, you, and you zoom out of your Safari tabs, you would see that kind of image. Um, and then, while I was um, trying to imitate that image, um, I also had the, the commission of, or the, the job to design the identity of the open day at the academy where I was teaching in Antwerp. And um, for the open day identity, I really thought it would be nice to show students' work because uh, a lot of nice work uh, never sees daylight. Um, so this was my finder window um, with all the students' work. Um, and then I would go through it and um, see it in these different windows. And then I decided that the identity could be like a series of windows. So um, every image or a series of image got one A4 paper. Uh, and the A4 paper was designed like a, like a digital window. And then if you would combine uh, different uh, papers, you, go, you would get a poster. Um, we needed different posters for, for example, uh, the first year classroom, the second year classroom, the third year uh, multimedia studio, info stand. So this is actually what I was um, talking to you, uh, talking about before, uh, the, the Safari tabs that would appear. Um, and with this window ID, I thought it could be nice for the, the flyer. Um, and when you would fold the flyer, the different tabs would um, interact with the folds. Um, so this vocabulary, um, that's really something that kept me busy the last year. Um, so also words that uh, we constantly see uh, while designing, for example, in InDesign. Um, it's something the computer talks um, to us with. Um, it says fit, it says okay, uh, it says safe. And every time I was trying to take those words and, and put it in a different context, um, I realized it's pretty fun to see how those specific silly words um, can almost have a uh, more heroic meaning, like um, saving a file is something else than saving a human being, for example, uh, or help. So I had this list of all these words that could mean um, something online, uh, digitally, but also uh, in the physical world. Um, and then uh, I was asked by a, a French graphic design festival um, in Chaumont, and they wanted to have a, a full campaign for their um, festival. Uh, it just opened uh, a month ago. Um, and it's called Post Medium. And then they were talking to me about the subject, and um, they were talking about how the computer um, is not any, more, not any longer only a tool, but also an active collaborator. So someone or something you work with. Um, so then I thought, oh yeah, maybe uh, these words, um, or the computer could become a poet or um, uh, an artist. And I would just show one word surrounded with a lot of white. Um, yeah, trying to, um, um, yeah, question the meaning. Um, so there were all different um, media uh, produced for the identity. And then one other thing that was on the poster was um, the file name. So 
everything you make uh, uh, has a file name, and this file name was actually part of the design, which was really handy, so uh, then you could also always see what it was uh, afterwards. So on the left, you see the temporary cover of the catalog, um, and on the right, that was a, an advertisement for a magazine. This was the save the date card. A Facebook event banner. And as you can see, the, the vocabulary um, or the commands that I borrowed from design interfaces um, are also appearing in between the information. Um, Like here, this would be uh, a, a Instagram slideshow. So the first slide was Instagram post number one dot JPEG, Instagram post number two dot JPEG, and Instagram post number three dot JPEG. Um, yeah, a tote bag. And then um, in the end, uh, we also made a catalog. So it was a graphic design or is a graphic design festival with various exhibitions, um, but also a poster competition. Um, and all this had to go in one catalog. Um, here you can see the cover and um, the first page. And for the concept of this catalog, I thought it would be um, a nice experiment to take all the words that I collected from the design interfaces and put them alphabetically and then take all the content of the catalog and also put the titles in between those words uh, in alphabetical order. So it would almost become a dictionary. Um, and this was uh, kind of fun because the colophon would be in the middle of the book because of it was uh, the letter C. Um, the foreword would not at all be in the front, uh, but more in the back uh, because of its title and so on. Um, so some spreads look like that, so there was a, a rhythm with um, these words like all, allow, apply, and then there would be a title of a poster of the poster competition. And then there were also articles with uh, images. And um, for the caption of the images, I thought again that maybe these um, file names could be um, a good way of informing about the image. So the file names would appear on the image as if you would um, uh, scroll over it or touch it with your mouse. Um, so to jump back to the book, um, this is another um, uh, lady that appears a lot in my book um, and in different sizes. And um, she comes from um, another project um, uh, from last year. Um, and um, it's um, a, a publishing house in Antwerp and um, Letterwerk. And uh, they were interested in um, providing uh, a translation of the first chapter of uh, Derrida's uh, La Vérité en Peinture. So f you already had it in French, in English, and now we were making uh, a Dutch translation of um, the first chapter, Parergon. Um, and they really came to me and they asked me to incorporate my my research into the design of the book. Um, and this is the original um, design of the, um, of the, yeah, the original design of the book. This is the English version. Um, but uh, they decided to uh, leave empty spaces in between pieces of text and then um, frame it with these little crop marks. Um, and then I was looking for a contemporary translation, and then, yeah, I thought about, yeah, visualizing um, a break, like when you um, enter. 
So these empty gaps would now be filled with um, those symbols. So then we had this small book, um, but in the original book there were also images, but um, we couldn't really, uh, or we didn't have um, uh, authorship, or we didn't really could use them in their original way. Um, so I scanned the original images, and they would appear in the book, uh, the scans, and then there would be an edition, so a second book that you get uh, when you buy the first book. And so the image pages would reappear in the, um, in the other book. And then next to that, you could see like um, <coughs> um, uh, visual, um, or how I um, try to make the images my own. So screenshots of a, of a design process, um, working with these images. Um, like you, see, you can see here. Um, this, images, uh, this image uh, comes from uh, the screenshot I showed you before. It's um, this image I used for uh, the blanket. Um, and why I want to come back to it is that um, what I appreciate about this is that the digital image um, becomes something material. It, um, we could find a sort of structure in it, um, a materiality. Um, and the nice thing about this whole research topic is that once you've been working with all these um, images all the time, you become obsessed. So when I look around in nature or in the city, I see also the same patterns reappearing um, that I find on the screen. Um, these are, for example, uh, very small details that I try to capture uh, by zooming in, printing it, scanning it, zooming in again. Um, so I really became familiar, for example, with this pixel uh, on the right. It's like a, a small piece of, of a photo um, that was selected, and that's why it has this border. Um, I also traced it uh, manually, uh, and it's also on the cover of the book. When I go on holiday to France and I see sunshine on the ground, I also started tracing it. Um, so, yeah, it becomes like something that's really um, occupies my mind. Um, and then again, I would come home and make it digital. Um, so this relation between the structures I find on my screen and the structures I find in nature, I think that's a really fun thing to discover. Um, so, for example, this one, it's a, a flower uh, arrangement, um, and it's just a font that I found on dafont.com, and it's a font with all the glyphs are flowers, and then I zoomed in on it, and then I saw that it's, again, like a really bad uh, path, like very badly drawn digitally. But these imperfections uh, really caught my attention, and I thought, uh, okay, computer, you did a good job. This is like a really nice design. Um, and at that point, I was also asked by a local small printer in Antwerp to make uh, an image that we could print on a small edition. Um, and then we printed this one, or we embossed these flowers on uh, a silver uh, cardboard. Um, so it would become uh, like a mirror uh, with flowers on it. The flowers appear in the book uh, in a certain chapter where I show many images where I play around with strokes. So it's like a, 
the stroke options in InDesign are a playground. <laughs> and when you just hit every button there is, um, I think you can find really surprising designs. Um, so again, the computer offers me something that I would never be able to come up with myself. Um, sometimes it goes wrong, um, and there are some imperfections, um, but that's what I like. Um, or sometimes when you blow up or, or you uh, maximize the stroke weight, um, an image would become almost uh, unrecognizable. So on the left you can see, uh, again, a flower arrangement. Um, and I also used those images for the Chaumont Biennale uh, because they needed uh, diplomas for the winners of the, of the competition. And then I thought maybe giving them flowers or at least flowers drawn by the computer um, would be a nice gesture. So all the different winners would have um, different uh, flowers. So, yeah, as you can see um, here, the, the actual design jobs are constantly reappearing in, in the book. So, um, yeah. And about those strokes and about, um, so first I was exploring it um, in InDesign. Um, but then, again, uh, when you walk around, all of a sudden you also see it um, everywhere. And this was, for example, a shop window of a, of a butcher. So, and this was in New York. People uh, also do it to make something stand out on a window um, and make a contrast. So now I had to make a poster for the master show uh, at our academy. Uh, it's in two weeks. And uh, first I thought about a title and I thought, again about these shop windows, and then, okay, so they're graduating, and I thought the title could be Thank You, Come Again. Um, and then I created um, these heavy strokes, again referring to um, the shop windows. So this is the actual result. Um, or that was the, the poster and then some Instagram posts or slideshow. Um, this is a movie, but I don't think it works. Um, and then the nice thing about this exhibition is, is that it's actually two exhibitions. Um, so first they're gonna show the graduation projects and then the months after they do a second show with a selection of projects. So there we focus in the identity on the come again aspect. So it's basically the same design, but then with a different accent and a different color. Um, so the next uh, step in the book, um, so it first starts with um, yeah, again, this Facebook uh, feeling suggestion about um, feeling lost. Um, and then um, some vocabulary that would pop up when something goes wrong. Um, for example, when uh, your font is not found. Um, this is how it appears in the book, but maybe it's Maybe these slides should have gone before. <laughs> um, but this is actually a very old design. I know it's, it's pretty ugly, but um, it's uh, something uh, I opened again when I had a new computer a while ago. And then the fonts were not installed on my computer, so this error would occur. Um, so it would look like that. And um, I thought it was way better than what I did. Um, again, the computer was providing me with something uh, interesting. Um, so the pink shapes, um, the, the typeface that was replaced. Um, so I started opening all these old files without installing the typefaces. And then um, I would get these images, um, these screenshots 
that then again I would copy and uh, mimic. Um, and it also became a tool or a visual language that I started using um, in commissions. Like this one was um, a poster for Princess Nokia. It was a, a concert. Um, and then I used the pink bars uh, that appear um, when a font is not found. And you might wonder, what does this have to do with Princess Nokia or with a music show? Um, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, typefaces not being found. Um, but this is maybe um, a small example of how I like to incorporate, yeah, just things um, that are typically now. Like, I'm designing this poster now, in, or then, in 2017, and this is what happens now on my screen. And um, I think that's kind of important that design sometimes becomes also, yeah, a memory of a, of a moment in time, apart from its content. Or these are some pages that are about um, typing and uh, the the signal it gives you while you're typing or when you're selecting something um, or when your preview mode um, doesn't show you the text but it shows only gray stripes. Um, but also uh, actual errors. So this was a, a flyer I designed uh, a while ago and um, I opened it again uh, at a point where my computer was really suffering, so um, it showed me this distorted version, so the typeface was completely um, transformed. Um, again, I was jealous about the, um, yeah, the qualities of um, the design uh, the computer was showing me. So I was screenshotting like a maniac and uh, because I was afraid that it would uh, um, uh, disappear. And then I was lucky to have uh, an intern that was really good in uh, making typefaces and he created his interpretation on uh, the screenshots that I made and he made a new uh, typeface out of it. These um, sketches and uh, errors and um, yeah, different typefaces also appear in the book. And for example, this one um, is, is a sketch where I try to um, find where the error is happening. So it was just a stretching between uh, different anchor points um, that I could easily mimic. Um, and yeah, there are so many ideas for, for typefaces. I wish I was better at making them um, because I would love to have a typeface uh, that has these anchor points uh, uh, in it. Um, you could have different weights. Um, or this could be a regular, uh, this could be a medium, or this could be a bold. Um, So I guess it could go on and on uh, like that. Um, and I hope it will. <laughs> so I think I'm already at the end of the lecture. <laughs> so I'm going to close. Спасибо, Инесса. Thank Друзья, у нас сейчас much, есть время для вопросов и ответов. Пожалуйста, поднимайте свои руки и поднимайте руки, если вы хотите задать вопрос. И к вам подойдет девушка с микрофоном, и вы можете его задать. А также, если вы не знаете английский язык, вы можете задать вопрос на русском. Я сейчас передам Инессу просто для синхронного перевода. Спасибо.
Thank you for your presentation. Um, I see that you uh, put a big attention to the fonts and typography in uh, your design and your presentation. And I want to hear uh, your first impression about the Kyrillic. Uh, the Kyrillic on the streets of Moscow, the Kyrillic in navigation, the Kyrillic maybe in books and internet, maybe you have um, opportunity to uh, know it uh, better. And uh, I'm really interested, what's your impressions about the Kyrillic and typography? Uh, I, don't, yeah. I cannot read it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's something uh, very special to me. Like, I, I arrived here and um, the only things I could read was H&M and Ikea and Mercedes. <laughs> um, but about the type, um, yeah, it's a difficult question. <laughs> um, you know, because you said I use a lot of typography, um, for me it, um, it doesn't have so much to do with the actual alphabet or with typefaces. I think when you would look at my portfolio, I think you can only see five typefaces. I'm not really well in choosing one, for example. Uh, I think it's a hard job. Um, for me, it's more about language, like the use of language. And, and, and language is um, the most easy to use with words, and words are typography. Um, so having an opinion about uh, the shape of, the, of your letters, um, I don't know. I can only say they look beautiful, but I don't know what they mean. So I have to dive into it more. Uh, better. Is that an answer? <laughs> Hello. Can you hear the translation? Дорогой speaker. Can you hear the translation? Does that work? One, two. Не работает устройство у спикера. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Yeah? yeah? Good. Да, теперь вы меня слышите? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, Class. good. На, я бы хотела задать вопрос, я бы хотела поинтересоваться, что вы думаете насчет того, что с каждым годом история дизайна все больше похожа на искусство, она изобразительно искусство, как будто, знаете, я иногда вижу очень красивый флайер, но мне хочется, чтобы рядом кто-то написал, что это значит вообще. Типа, куда мне прийти с ними? То сам дизайн и его удобство всегда считают, что уходят только лишь в красоту. Что вы думаете об этом? To beauty only. What do you think about it? Um, yeah, I think um, I've been uh, teaching also the past few years, and um, I think it's a difficult discussion because what does a design need to do? Um, does it always have to translate everything? Does it always have to be? Um, a literal visual translation of the content. Like, for example, if you see the cover of a book, do you have to know immediately what it's about? Um, that's what I'm wondering. And, um, and I know that many um, people that give me assignments or commissions, they always want that. They always want that their logo, their book cover, or their identity is like self-explanatory that it says everything about uh, the content. But I'm not really um, convinced about um, uh, that idea. I think a design should, um, first of all, get your attention and get you to think about something and not necessarily give you answers to something. Uh, is that an answer to your question? Mm. Yeah, that's great. As for the book covers, I totally agree with you, but as for polygraphy, for example, invitations or calendars or something that we look at for a short amount of time, I would say that for that design has to be simplified. It has to be simple because the information otherwise is distant from, distanced from us. We can't understand what we see, but I think design has to get us closer to the source of information. Yeah, that's especially the case when um, it's really a tool um, 
to find your way or to get certain uh, important information, yeah, then it just has to be clear. <laughs> um, and there cannot be any noise um, around it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Could you please tell us where we can find your book, where we can order the book? Um, I'm, I published it myself. <laughs> uh, well, actually, the Academy paid for it <laughs> um, because I was doing part of my research uh, under their uh, umbrella. Uh, they supported my research and they also helped me uh, produce and publish the book. But it's not in bookstores. I uh, just have a small post office now at my home. And uh, <laughs> I put them in uh, cardboard packages and I send them to you when you ask me. Yeah. So you can send me an email and I will send it to you. Hello, thank you very much for the talk. Um, you know, my question is, have you ever worked for brands of mass production? Uh, because your works are very unusual, they are full of different meanings, and I'm wondering, when you make design for broad audiences, do you, do you think that this work has some peculiar characteristics to it? Is it different from your free research? Um, it's actually a conscious decision um, that I, I, I rather um, focus on smaller projects, um, which are maybe less commercial. Um, I've been doing different kinds of jobs, um, and sometimes it involves a, a really broad audience. But then again, I don't like to um, think of your audience as someone stupid or um, that's something I don't want to do. Um, and if people don't understand, maybe at least uh, they will try <laughs> and activate their minds. Um, but anyway, I, I don't work for big brands like, uh, like uh, to sell a burger or, um, or shoes. Um, so that's something totally different than making a book about uh, a, a French philosopher. So, um, yeah, so I'm just not, re that's not really my, my, um, my focus, yeah. Thank you. More questions? Um, any other questions? Um, don't be shy. While we have some time, we have around like 10 more minutes for the Q&A session. So if you have a question, please don't hesitate to raise your hand. When you ask the questions, also please stand up. Okay. Хорошо, тогда а вот в среднем ряду девушка тянет руку. Сейчас к вам. Please wait for the mic. Um, hello, thank you for the lecture, and uh, I wanted to ask that um, in your works you rarely use photos, and are you doing it on purpose or it's just came out like this and that's it. Um, you're totally right. <laughs> um, that was something I was also realizing uh, while making the lecture. Um, it's really sad. Uh, I wish I could use more photographs and I told it to myself uh, many times that I, I, um, I should do that more often. Uh, <laughs> but it's not like a, a natural reflex in a way. Like when when I have to um, make a design and there's not really a given uh, image, 
uh, from an artist or from uh, a writer or uh, whatever, then I don't have the natural reflex to come up with one my own. Um, but it's something I, I uh, really want to do in the future. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Okay, um, so who inspired you in your work and, you know, who just follow it on Instagram when you want to find, like, something crazy and something new in design? Do you have, like, guys who you love in design? Oh, sorry, you know, like, guys who you... Uh, uh, just your guys? favorite designers ah. and like artists uh -huh. um, uh, not on Instagram <laughs> because um, I am on Instagram and I really like to use it and um, uh, or misuse it or um, use it as a tool but not for inspiration because uh, it's the same with Tumblr and Pinterest. Um, I think it's very dangerous to be constantly confronted with other design. Um, yeah. Um, when I get an overload of uh, <laughs> graphic design posts, I, I feel so unoriginal and I feel so pff, silly making my things. Um, I don't know, it doesn't inspire me. Um, because also when you see graphic design, for example, on, on Instagram, it's totally out of context most of the time. And um, yeah, I rather look at, at art um, and, and artists and then um, most of all to art practices uh, as a whole. Um, that's what inspires me the most. Like, an overview exhibition of an artist I like, or a book about an artist. Um, because all, yeah, artists, music, it's all same ideas in a way, but just an, a different um, visualization. Um, yeah. You want actual names? Or <laughs> um, well, maybe about graphic designers. Um, um, I think um, my teachers were really important um, and not specifically uh, their work or, or the outcome of their work but um, how they uh, approach graphic design. So I had really nice teachers in Ghent and then afterwards also in the Netherlands uh, where I studied. Um, and to name one person, <laughs> I really like uh, Braulio Amado. Uh, he's like a New York designer. I don't know if you know him. Yeah? And I really like him because it's something totally different also. And I would never know how to create stuff like he does. And I think um, it's super special. It's very unique. And um, it's so free. Um, and it's maybe something my work isn't. Um, so I really admire that. Um, the freedom in his work. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I don't know if it's a question really or just an observation, but are you, when, how do you decide to make this transition from digital world to physical? It, it, just for me, it seems like you developed some kind of relationship with subject or object that you're looking on the screen and you have some, I, I, I don't know, you made something and then you have this decision. How, how, where does it come from? Um, it's a personal desire. Um, I want to make things physical. <laughs> that sounds dirty. Um, no, but like even when I take photographs of my friends or my family or uh, nice landscapes when I'm on a holiday, I make actual photo albums. So or now I'm a bit behind, but um, I really like that it actually exists, that it's in my bookshelf and I can take it and I don't have to look at a light while looking at it. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons. Um, 
like I also have um, I, I'm, I'm this summer I'm moving to a different apartment and I have less space so now I'm really realizing that I'm keeping so much on paper like I print everything <laughs> Um, I have uh, ring binders full of sketches and test prints of everything that I do on the screen. And um, I, yeah, it's just another obsession and uh, yeah. I just want to ask you, uh, you was talking about the projects and you showed how you use your research in uh, commercial projects. But do you have uh, other way when you have uh, a commercial project and you start your research from the task from this commercial project? Yeah, often. <laughs> that's, the, that's what's nice about it. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of a project that I showed. Um, yeah, for example, the book um, for uh, the Derrida translation. Um, so there, the, the assignment was given. Um, and because of the book, um, and because of trying to transforming the images uh, digitally, I executed a lot of research. And not everything is in there, in the actual end result but then it's in my book or it's in my archive or uh, in my head. So, yeah, once in a while that really happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, does it mean that uh, uh, clients come to you because they know that you have such a specific research and they know that you will approach, uh, use this approach in your project? Does it mean that? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's something um, I'm, I, I'm trying to communicate um, really consciously, like I show work that I want to do, um, and yeah, that's really important. That yeah, that's why. I, for example, I don't. Uh, what the most hard uh, design jobs are are for friends and family, because they don't come to you for your portfolio, but they come to you because you know them. Um, so. And then they have different expectations because they don't know your portfolio. Um, and those are the hard jobs. <laughs> yeah. But you make research uh, there also. <laughs> like, do you make research uh, in such a uh, situation also? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I, uh, it's like about an invitation or, or a birth card or, uh, you know, a logo, yeah. stuff like that. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Здравствуйте. А, можно Hello. спросить насчет... Ну вот сзади вас две надписи. Uh, hi, behind you there are two inscriptions. Да, все равно. Понятно. Uh, сзади сзади вас две you, надписи. There are two Одна inscriptions. на латинице, а другая на нашей кириллице. Вот вас вообще привлекает кириллица, потому well, что... Well, do you feel attracted uh, to the Cyrillic version? Because a lot of brands in Russia switch to Cyrillic alphabet. Um, and use it uh, as their main kind of typography. So does it look attractive to you, the Russian inscription behind you, to the left? <laughs> um, you mean Russian brands are using the Cyrillic script? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's why I was maybe disappointed uh, when I was driving from the airport to the hotel, I saw just Mercedes and uh, H&M, I was like curious how it would look like um, in a different alphabet. Um, yeah, of course, these kind of things have a lot to do with what kind of market you want to approach. If you want to stay local and um, have a Russian audience or, or an audience that can read it, I think it's perfectly fine that you keep this tradition, it's really important. Um, but if you want to go internationally, then you have a small problem, I think. But, um, <laughs> but I do feel attracted to it, yes. <laughs> um,
Raz, raz. Uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, unfortunately, I'm late a little bit, but I found really new things. And you made me to think that here is a really weak edge uh, nowadays between um, art and design. And your design starts from ideas, and it is the same in art, art starts from ideas, and uh, you create art. So that is really cool. And um, now I'm thinking about to ask you not pretty comfortable question in our country. How do you, what do, what do you think about psychedelic experience to find new ideas and to expand your mind to find new space of freedom. That depends on what you mean with psychedelic experience. <laughs> As you think. Um, well, um, I could reply to you how I find inspiration. Um, and it's just by looking carefully and and actually focusing on something, and that has a lot to do maybe with meditation, <laughs> um, or try to be aware of something. Um, uh, what was your question? <laughs> you mean what kind of experience I'm having? Um, but what is a psychedelic experience? Um, now I'm carefully learning the history of art, uh -huh. especially music art uh, and um, modern art. And there are a lot of examples uh, how people use psychedelic experience to generate and offer really great ideas to the uh, society. And that is the question. What, what is your uh, relations with the uh, psychedelic experience? Because as I see, um, your ideas are really strong and you are super confident in your style. Um, you create straight things which are really confident. You mean if I take drugs or? <laughs> um, uh, no, <laughs> I never did. Um, but um, I don't know. Um, it's about maybe being not so conscious about something um, that would give you new experiences. Um. What, what do you think about psychedelic experience? That, that's the question. Um, I really like psychedelic music. Mm -hmm. um, but more than that, I don't have much experience with it. Um, okay. I'm not an expert, so it's hard to give you a, a real opinion. Um, yeah. Okay. Hi, thanks for the lecture. Um, I just wonder if you know, because I don't, um, if there's a relationship between graphic design and humor. Because um, I often find myself making something and trying to make a joke at the same time. Uh, the relationship between graphic design and humor? Yeah. I am. Um, I hope so. <laughs> um, I think um, it's important to make a joke and do silly things um, that are not serious. Um, uh, otherwise, it would be really boring. <laughs> um, and I think humor 
um, has a lot of uh, usable ideas uh, as well to translate to graphic design. There are a lot of techniques for humor, um, like for example, repetition or um, enlarging a certain aspect. Uh, those are all techniques I think you could easily translate towards any other um, field like graphic design or even cooking or uh, making music. Um, but then also the question, um, can design be funny? <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. First, first of all, thank you very much for the talk. It was very insightful. And my question is very simple. What do you think is more important, font or color? That's the question. Um, in which context? <laughs> in general. Um, fonts. Yeah. Um, because color, it's so random for me. Um, I, I rarely choose a color uh, because of a meaning. Um, well, no, that's not true, no. Um, but anyway, color is, um, is very difficult, especially when you're collaborating with people because it's also something very personal. Um, and then I think a typeface is more uh, easy to... Um, defend an ID with uh, than a color. Yeah. Thank you. Здравствуйте. Hello. Я по-русски, по-английски не смогу сформулировать, так спрошу. Вы много сказали про то, что вы любите все печатать и вообще изучать вещи, которые офлайн, которые осязаемы, которые можно потрогать. Но я просто пока вас слушал, вопрос вам задавали, подумал, что есть такой тренд, особенно в мире журналистов, что печатная в России, по крайней мере, точно знаю, что в Европе это лучше развито, и там уже много покупают, I know that in Europe it's better developed, they are, their magazines are bought, they are collected, but in Russia everything goes digital. For example, special projects are released on digital, Instagram is heavily used, social media are heavily used, new apps. So all of the visual communication now is, for the major part, is happening in digital. For example, Yandex, the Russian Google kind of, is launching an app where we can take a look at different objects and we can приложение понимает вещи, мы можем дальше строить этот сторителлинг. So we can use it for our own storytelling. What do you think about this trend, like all these tangible material things? They are being lost, and they are not that popular as digital. So new formats have a lot more popularity. And what about your relationship to this new media? You said that you don't like using Instagram, there you have it, but new media is going to devour everything, and we will need to adapt it to it. So what do you think about it? I was just wondering. Thank you. Um, maybe I, I didn't understand it correctly, or I didn't explain it correctly. Um, I don't like Instagram as a human being, but as a graphic designer, I love it. <laughs> um, it's just something that makes me unhappy personally um, when I'm too long on Instagram. But as a designer, I think it's super fascinating. And um, actually, what you're describing is also um, yeah, why I use these Facebook templates and Instagram. I think it's a new world, or it's not so new anymore. <laughs> it's um, pretty normal. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, we have to get to know it, and we have to use it. And But this being... Um, 
um, very accepted in our world, it doesn't mean you have to obey it also. Um, and I think you can still keep on questioning its formats, um, although, um, yeah, it's most of all becomes digital now, uh, and it's something hard to avoid. Um, and I'm, I think it's pretty exciting. I also love making digital designs. It's a lot easier um, because, for example, when I have to print something, um, like when I was printing the book, it was a nightmare um, because the, um, the stress that it gave me to, to have everything right for the print and uh, the paper and then would it be a, a nice object and it, it gives me also a lot of stress and when I just have to make an image that is digitally, it is like that and you have 100% control over it and um, there's no printer that will influence the end result or there's no uh, book binder or, um, or someone won't hang your poster uh, skewed on a wall, um, it will be perfectly online. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's also really exciting. Um, yeah. 